Okay, so I was driving this morning. I was just so, I was just so blessed and ju- I was just so relaxed. And I'm thinking, I'm so glad I'm part of a church culture and a church leadership that just, that just allows me to release the, the, who I am. And, you know, we all have, um, we all have boundaries, mm-hmm. right? So we create, as leaders, we create, uh, there's like a canvas, right? And we say in that canvas, you can paint whatever you want. You can use whatever paintbrush you want, whatever colors you want, and just be yourself. Yeah. But you have to stay within the, the, the borders of the canvas, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so, and I think that's the healthy, healthy leadership. And so I was just, I was just re- reminded of other church cultures that I've been a part of where there wasn't that healthy boundary. Like you've created healthy boundaries for all of us. I, I, I believe I create healthy boundaries for my worship leaders and worship team. And yeah. it's, it's like a so on and so forth. So let's dive into healthy leadership, man. <laughs> You're a healthy leader. Can I share just Absolutely. a little bit? Yeah, please. Um, there's something that I've been like working through and studying right now is, is uh, the, the giving away of control and how nice. the giving away of control was one of God's first acts of wow. love towards man. Oh, that's good. Oh, and how like... Good. God created man, gave him life, and Didn't then said, control us. "Wow, here's authority." He may have done that again when he <laughs> right shed his blood. Yeah, but just, but but Travis, in that he did create powerful. a canvas, a boundary for us. Absolutely, isn't that funny? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there still is that. It's there an still amazing, is that boundary, like beautiful yeah. example, and how like us, how off, how often are we willing to be like God in His image and give away control and give away authority? And I challenge myself all the time. I even find it with my kids. I still struggle a lot with being like Father God to them in the sense of here's authority, here's authority, here's authority. Yeah. And then saying, hey, if you mess it up, like. There's consequence. Like, There's a consequence, right? Or yeah. yeah. Just you made the mess, clean it up. Well, that, and that's the consequence. Yeah. <laughs> you have to clean up your mess. You know? <laughs> so, and and, you, know, and you, you, you have similar. That. You've had Absolutely. cultures like where it was domineering. Absolutely. I think there's a radical shift in church leadership. And I think we might see an overcorrection. Um, but there's definitely, we have to redefine what authority means according to like kingdom authority. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the disciples are arguing, who's going to sit at your right hand and left? And Jesus is like, you don't, you're That's not good. getting it, guys. That's, good. That's not how we reign. That's, That's not great. how we rule. Yeah. We're not like the world. That's good. We serve. The greatest among you is a servant. And so authority in the kingdom, it doesn't mean control. Control comes from fear. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or and hoarding. Insecurity and, and fear. We yes. To, uh, we can even look at nature the way God created things. Cross-pollination, um, cultivation, collaboration. To me, good. you know, like we, we are the posts on the sides of trees in people's lives that help them grow straight. Mm-hmm. But we don't control how they grow. That's we're, good. we're not the, the one who does that. God gives the increase. We, we plant and we water, but God gives the increase, like 1 Corinthians 3, 6, you know. So I think the, I love the canvas analogy. And we're going to learn, I think, in the next 10, 20 years, what it means to collaborate. We've lost the art of collaboration. And in essence, we've lost true expression mm. because we don't know how to collaborate. Because, because leaders we're won't still collaborate. trying to prove ourselves. Well, I'm yeah. gifted. I'm anointed. Look. Because we, we don't know our own significance. Yeah. So we're living from this place. <clears throat> Most church cultures thrive, in a, not in a good way, but they, it, it, maybe that's the wrong word. Most church cultures are based upon a value system of gifting, not sonship. Mm, and so it's like, true. I'm gifted, I'm gifted, I'm gifted. And so everybody wants to be on the platform. Everybody wants to be. But what about, I, I was talking to my wife this morning. I'm like, Rochelle, let's do a little video thing where we take the people in our church that nobody sees, but they serve and they're amazing and do a video and yeah, highlight them and call it hidden treasures Mm. and honor them in front of the whole church. (laughs) That every person is significant, not just a preacher, not just the one you see up here singing, yeah. Chris. No, I'm just kidding. But no, it's at, true. you know what I mean? And then honor them. Standing ovation. Give them a gift. Say, this awesome woman of God yeah. has been serving in toddlers for years Come on. and loves these kids. And she is a very important part of the body. And that's, <clears throat> I think that's a healthy value system. Dude, that's so, that's everyone good. is important. That's so wild because when I was driving again this morning, I was thinking about just these things were coming to me. 
And I was thinking about how as in, in the church culture, especially the evangelical church culture in the area of, of worship, of, because that's my that's what I do. Right. We honor we place greater honor on those who are selling CDs, who are touring. Mm. Um, and these are all great people. Some some friends of ours are doing this. They're yeah. doing great things that I'd love to be doing. But not everyone's called to do that. Yeah. Some right. people are called to, to just be the worship pastor over their community in the middle of Kansas. And that's what God's created them to right. do. And they do great at it. Yeah. But we don't see it. And we don't, so if we don't see it, we don't honor it. And value it. Yeah. And so we don't value it because, well, oh, they're, they're good. I mean, even the people in their own c- c- community, I'm right. saying even. Because, well, yeah, but they're not, I mean, they don't have a record. Right? They're not writing music. Well, maybe that's not what they're supposed to do. Maybe they're just supposed right. to pastor you. Yeah. Right. And, well, and we're it's trying so, to be like somebody else. Right. We don't know who we are. And so there's a... There's a we're there's just a, copying somebody else. There's like a, a backwards thinking in, in, in our culture of honor. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like we honor on what we... On, on like the world's success, honestly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this, this guy, oh, this guy sold a million records. Uh, I mean, yeah, we want to honor that. But yeah. honestly, is he any more anointed... Than the dude playing in the in the you know in his home church who's had maybe offers to go, but he's like, no, I'm called yeah, to be to the be pastor to these people, and, yeah. and so I think we've all been guilty of that. But just he was the, just he's still hidden, you know. People the exposure. Some people just get the right exposure, and that's it. And that's all it takes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that they're more the end all goal. It doesn't mean they're more anointed than the other right, guy. Absolutely. Yeah. And those value systems affect how a church or yep. People function together as a team, leadership. And I love uh, what Jonathan Welton says in a small book I recommend. Uh, it's called New Covenant Leaders. And he says, the greater the authority, the greater the servanthood. Oh, wow. So That's good. Uh, apostles, uh, you know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, leaders should be foot washers. Mm-hmm. So if you have more authority, that just means you have more feet to wash. And that's that I think we're seeing this paradigm shift right now in the church and we might see an overcorrection, which I would love to see where we still value the local church and serving because in a culture like ours, it might be harder to get people to serve because we're not on them. Like you have to serve, you have to do this and you have to, and yeah. because that's just not how we roll, you know, and it should come from the heart and we don't want people to get burnt out. We don't want to abuse. We don't want to prostitute people for their gifts. Right. We want them to that's come right. alive in who they are. But it's powerful to see somebody who's been under, because I felt it, a controlling thing. And then, oh, my gosh, I can actually release who I That's am. That's amazing. And I can fly. And yeah. we're made to do that. We're made to fly. And we should have room to do that and have conversations. And re- the relational dynamic is key what did in you a leadership say, team. What did you say the other, the other Sunday about uh, one of the first things uh, uh, God said was the was the birds. Oh, he, when he yeah he created so, the trees and yeah. the first thing that he said to bless creatures okay that he made was let the birds fly, it's which I believe is almost like a so like a fingerprint of God's DNA. He just loves to create things. <sighs> just do amazing. what you're yeah. made to do. Come on, it's, it's powerful. Yeah, it is powerful. 